I've just come across this individual by the name of Chris. Chris who? Blake Criswell. Who? Blake Criswell. Blake Criswell, and you're from Dyer, Tennessee? Yes, sir. And where are you going, Mr. Blakewell? Uh, just down the road? Just down the road, wherever he leads me. Wherever he leads you? Yes, sir. And then you're going to turn around and go back to Dyer later on this afternoon or tonight? Uh, or are you going to be out in the weather all night? Uh, not all night, but, well, I can't, I'm not going to say it. You really don't know? You're just being led by the Lord? Yes, sir. Good for you. God, hallelujah. Um, how long have you been uh, witnessing and, and being an inspiration uh, for, for God and for the Lord Jesus Christ? Year, every, two years, every, five years? Ever since uh, pretty much he saved me, which was a little over two years ago. God bless you. And God bless you I for you been do doing this for very long. But, but, uh, Who inspired you to do that? Um, the, the guy that, uh, well, Ar Arthur Blessed? No, sir. Um, because Arthur Blessed is the one that originally started that right. towards pulling a cross all over, all yeah, over. I've read his story. It's, it's amazing, his testimony. Yeah. But uh, the Lord himself inspired me to do it. Okay. And there's so many lost out there right now. Yes, it is. So many on the road to eternity in hell, and I'm, will, I'm willing to go out and let them know that they don't have to go there. But God Jesus bless you. He died on this cross, and then he rose again three days later from the dead. God rose, raised him three days later. Yes, he dead. did. Yes, he did. And then afterwards, he sent, ascended to the right hand of the Father. Yes, he did. All for the sins of all of us. Yes, he did. Wretched and filthy sinners like us. Yes, he did. And if he's willing to save me from my sins and eternity in hell, he's willing to save anybody. Anybody. Else. Anybody who's sincere to call out on onto his name. Um, I met... His word says that it is not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and eternal life. Yes, yes. So, do you preach the gospel in a church somewhere? Are you, te are you a teacher or anything? No, sir. Just, just a crosswalker. Just kind of do do your own thing? Yes, sir. Kind of like a parking lot preacher or something? <laughs> Sometimes. Because that's how I started. Right. Being a parking lot preacher. But I met Mr. Arthur Blessed. Oh, uh really? Yeah. What's he like? Uh, he's a really good guy. He really is. I met him uh, out in Denver, Colorado. Okay. Um, uh, over at a at a big church over there. Okay. And he, like you said, he's got a very very powerful testimony. Hello, Pam. Not Pam. Not Pam, but. Uh, no, ma'am. I've uh, I've actually got something to snack on. Go on. What are you talking about? Go on. I'm talking to this gentleman. What do I need to go on for? Am I bothering you, sir? No, sir. Who's saying anything about any trouble? Who are you anyway? What's your name anyway? I'll post you on my Facebook page too as well. No, you ain't got me on your Facebook. Who are you anyway? None of your business. None of my business. Don't you operate this facility here? Don't you work here? I don't have to tell you. Aren't you kin to Leroy Neal and the Neal family? That ain't none of your business. Who I'm kin to? Aren't you a, ain't your name Penny? No, you caused enough trouble for my family. Well, you're the one that come out here to me. I know what I'm asking. You're going to me to leave. Asking me to leave? Yeah. Don't, don't stop this man. He's, he's working for the Lord. And so am I. Am I not? You see my signs? You see my signs, Miss Penny? Right. Go up and call the law. Where you go? Where you go? Tell them that I'm out here having a com communication. That I'm talking to this guy. Go ahead. Get the, get the law involved. I'm talking to this guy, sir. Is there a problem in me talking to you? No. Sir. Not at all. Not at all. Look at her using the telephone. I'm going to back up just a little bit because she's going to call the law. I see. Let me go right over here. Let me go right over here and talk to you. Okay. I really want to talk to you. We got you documented. We got you documented.
See, I've run into hostility here in this town. I guess you could detect that. Yes, sir. And uh, the woman that's over there is part of the bunch that actually put out a whole lot of miscellaneous lies on me by telling everybody, the Neal family, that I was misled, I was confused, I was worshiping Satan. Um, Looks like your message is pretty clear to me. Right. Right. But because they don't like my message, because my message don't line up with their message, it's their way of displaying prejudicism against me. And basically, the, almost the whole town of Kenton has turned against me on account of these people well, uh, of their it. malicious lies. Brother, I've been... Don't think I haven't gone through my troubles with Satan and all his demons with this. I have. Oh, I know you have. You probably been spit on, cussed, and you probably lost not, a lot of friends and everything else. Well, not spit on, and but I, I'm sure I've been cussed. I, I can't remember though. But, but the Bible says, "Blessed are ye, Jesus said, blessed are ye when men shall say all manner of evil, speak all manner of evil against you falsely." Amen. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The cross is foolishness to them that perish, but that to us that are saved, it is eternal life. Amen. It is the gift of God. Amen. But, but but you've seen me. A lot, of, a lot of people ain't willing, ain't wanting to hear. But but you turn from your sins and your evil and wicked. Ways. But you seen me talking to you and you talking to me, me wasn't bothering nobody. And her walk out there the way that she done instead of me harassing her. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you declare it the other way around towards her harassing me? Yes, sir. She came out there. You wasn't bothering me. You wasn't, wasn't bothering, bothering her. us all. As a matter of fact, sometimes I. I hope I you pray, embrace. I pray that this these things happen because sometimes I need encouragement. Sometimes I get discouraged. Sometimes sure. I get discouraged in the fight. Sure. And, and in my faith. And sometimes I need that encouragement. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Why I embrace these things. One hundred percent. Do Do you need anything right now? I mean, do you need a ride no, or anything? No, sir. I've got. Uh, you got I've plenty got, of supplies. You got yes, money sir. and stuff. Yes, sir. Would die or not being that far? What are you about? 15 miles away from home? Uh, 12? Give or take? Give or take. Yeah. I can't exactly remember. But I, I just want to say to you, I admire you towards you doing what you're doing because it takes a lot of guts and gall to, to step out here into the eyes of, of, of the general public. You're basically a sheep uh, amongst wolves out here. And and they'll they'll rip you and tear you apart and laugh at you and scorn you and and just like uh, Miss Penny coming out and and uh, making a big fuss just because I was out here talking to you trying to support you. That's just like uh, Paul. I've been real discouraged in my faith here recently. And Paul, uh, I remember what Paul said he prayed for in First Corinthians chapter twelve. He, uh, the messenger of Satan. It says that the messenger of Satan came and and put a thorn in his flesh, and he prayed three times for that thorn to be removed. But God, uh, but Jesus replied back to him, "My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Therefore, I'd rather glory in the in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me." Amen. Amen. And you know that thorn could have been anything from. Apparently, you got a thorn in your flesh too, brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, we but, but that thorn could have been anything from guilt to a habit to him knowing that he had a weakness that he was working on. That thorn could have been anything that was con contrary to the way that he felt like that he should have been walking with the Lord. Right. And we all have those thorns. We all have various uh, burdens that fall up into our lives one way or the other, some a little stronger than others. And, you know, until God actually knocks us down and, and puts us on our knees and humbles our heart, we're really not going to have that strong relationship with Him That's right. uh, like we ought to have. That's why He said, My strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Yeah, that's right. And, I, and apparently something has, has affected your life, touched your life, uh, the Holy Spirit has got a hold of you to the point that you feel obligated and dedicated.
to getting out here and doing what you're doing. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart because it takes a lot of courage to get out here amongst all these wolves. I'm just a sheep that's just trying to stay close to the shepherd. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, sir. You care if I pray with you real quick? No, sir. Go ahead. Father God, you know that there's many of us out here doing what we're doing towards trying to glorify you in everything that we say and do. We just pray, God, for people like Sister Penny, uh, that you will touch her heart and realize that I meant no harm in talking to this woman, I mean talking to this uh, man pertaining to you. I meant no harm in sitting there um, trying to promote my message too as well. I just pray God for the unsaved. I pray Lord that you'll keep your hand upon to this gentleman right here as he's going forth in the ministry towards declaring you as the only begotten son and the only way to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Not, like I said, not too many are willing to hear repent, turn from your sins and your wicked ways no more. They only want to hear the love part. Well, it's not just about the love. It's about the God's holiness, His righteousness, and His and His faithfulness. I know. I know it is. And the thing about it is they have got it so commercialized now pertaining to religion that if you're not associated with the Presbyterians or the Methodists or the, or the Baptists Baptist, or, or the Church of, of Christ God, yeah. or the Assembly of God, if you're not associated with them towards a click, a click thing, uh, you're looked upon as being awkward. Right. You're looked upon as being uh, out of place. Right. And author blessed, God bless his soul. There's no telling how many hundreds of thousands of people that he has led to the Lord doing exactly what you're doing right now. And sir, I want to commend you and tell you, you keep your faith and you keep your walk with Christ and whatever the Lord tells you to do, you hang in there with him. Yes, sir. You hang in there all with the him. All the glory and all the thanks need to go to him. Though. Absolutely. I'm just a vessel that he chose to use. That's you know? right. Any of us. I'm, I'm undeserving and and I don't deserve this, but he's chosen me. The uh, pastor that I was going to church at out there in Denver, Colorado, his name was Dennis Leonard, and he was the guy that actually taught me how to go through the 12-step program of people that had various problems in their life, regardless whether it was addictions or, or other type of weaknesses that they was going through, and... and um, uh, Heritage Christian Center really, really taught me a lot whenever I was out in Denver, Colorado. That's where I got to meet uh, uh, Dennis Leonard at. Okay. Yeah, he, he's he, he's he's a very sincere guy. If you could uh, keep me and another brother in Christ in prayer, our Lord is sending us, has laid it on our hearts to go uh, with this cross, and his he's got a cross too. Good. Uh, he's laid it on our hearts to go down to Memphis and crosswalk and share the gospel down there be careful yes, down there because they will rob you down there i got robbed one time down there right off of uh right off of bill street they knocked me in the head and uh, they took my bill fall and i guess the only thing that saved me is that i had a watch on and they were trying to get the watch off and they hit the wrong button on the watch and the watch started beep 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 beep, beep like that and it must have frightened them because i heard one of them say uh he's the fuzz he's the fuzz like that and uh while i was laying down on the ground about five of them jumped up and left real quick so i'm letting you know that as long as you stay right there on, on bill street you're fine but if you go beyond the borders of bill street two or three streets over you're liable to get knocked in the head i'm gonna let you know that right now because it's already done happen to me once or twice towards being robbed and and being taken advantage of as far as people trying to take everything that you got right. in this day and time people people steal you shirt off your back man and this day and time in this day and time they liable to take your cross and use it for a post towards helping hold hold up uh hold up somebody's porch or something in which i don't mind giving nobody nothing right. if i got it to give i'll give it to you exactly. but don't come and steal it don't right. come and take it one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. That's right. Don't come and take it. 
But there's so much disrespect for the true anointing, for the true Christians of society, that I've never seen society like it is right now. So I'm definitely going to keep chapter you. chapter 24, Jesus said, uh, as it was in the days no, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at. And I don't we're know and I don't know what it's going to take to humble these people's hearts and, and to get them to be uh, subjected to, to listening to to the messen to the to the messengers that has the messages uh, that's getting the message out to the general public. I don't know what it's going to take to humble them, but I do know this: it's coming near a neighborhood near them, mm -hmm. because whatever it's going to take, regardless whether it be something on a one-to-one -one level or something pertaining to the masses. Whatever it's going to take, it's coming. Mm -hmm. yep, it's yep. coming. And he ain't going to do it out of hate. He's going to do it out of love towards bringing retribution to him. You know what he, I'm saying? Exactly. You do, know that a, you do know that an invisible microscopic germ could take probably half of us out if wow. God wanted to let something like that loose mm -hmm. upon to society. Exactly. He can do all things. Nothing is impossible for him. He can humble, he can humble society. You know, that's just like uh, you said, whatever it's going to take. Noah, yes, sir. In the days of Noah, <clears throat> there were people who were eating and drinking and giving and mar marrying and giving in marriage. And they all knew not. Noah warned them. Noah warned them. Every one of them, repent. Turn, Let's go on up here at this driveway. Here comes yes, the cop. Noah warned them. He kept no, he kept warning them, and they kept denying they had 120 him. 120 years to repent, but yeah. they did not. Yep. And they flood came, and they wa they were all washed away. Yep. And all, only Noah and his family were saved. I know it. I know it. And but that's, they were warned. And that's yes, they were warned. So they can't they can't shake their fist in the eyes of God one day and say, "Oh, you brought that infliction up onto us unwillfully, and we wasn't aware." No, they was aware. Exactly. They was told they before it ever hit it. that it was fixing to hit mm -hmm. if they didn't straighten out their lives. And they're the ones that made that conscious choice towards not wanting to straighten out and do right. It's just like Billy Graham. I heard in a Billy Graham uh, sermon. I can't remember what he said. Billy Graham, he's preached so many wonderful yeah. messages. Yes, a matter of fact, I got saved under under the Holy Spirit of a message that come from Brother Graham. Oh, really? Yes, I sure did. I resubmitted. I ain't going to say I, I become saved because I was basically a lost. I was I was heading down the wrong the wrong avenue and the Holy Spirit got a hold of me one afternoon after Billy Graham got through preaching a message and I resubmitted my heart and life over to Christ and from then on I have been a born again Amen. A different person and that's been since 2005 I used to smoke cigarettes I haven't put a cigarette in my mouth since 205 I used to smoke weed I ain't smoked no more weed since then I used to drink all the time all the time now every now and then I may drink a beer on a special occasion or some wine I used to cuss I used to carry on and, and not be concerned about trying to fulfill the will of God. But now, since I've resubmitted my heart and life, since 2005, how many years has that been now? 13? Yeah, 13 years. I've been on the straight and narrow, and I've been like you. I've been steadily pumping out material. I've been putting out the message pertaining to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know if you're an advocate for our military or not, but if you'll go to the back of my uh, vehicle, let me hold your cross for a second. Yes. Go to my vehicle for a second and look at the back of my vehicle. There you go. I'm an advocate for our military because, you know, there was military in the Old Testament. Yes, there sure was. Joshua was uh, Joshua, the one that yes. God chose to be the leader of the children of Israel. Yes. After Moses passed away. That's right. To be with the Lord, became the commander. That's right. And there was other uh, groups that God issued out uh, military might to defeat various corrupt kings in various corrupt countries. So exactly. the military, as far as I'm concerned, is part of the warfare of God, regardless whether it be the spiritual warfare mm -hmm. 
or the literal warfare. Exactly. It's still warfare. Exactly. Our, our military men and women deserve our utmost respect and they, I, they just get so much disrespect and it, it breaks my heart. I pray for them every day. We need to. I pray for and them we every need day. To pray for our leaders too. As, yeah. As Romans. Politicians. As Romans. Yep. Uh, Paul said in Romans. Yep. We need to pray for each other and hold each other up. God bless you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You too. Take care of yourself. May and the Lord and uh, you, may the Lord be with you too as well. God bless you. Here my brother goes. No, she, uh, one thing I will say, she said uh, that you need to. Uh, she said to you that you needed to leave me alone. That I'm about the Lord's business. Well, so are you. What what makes she, she her think that you're not? I mean, look at the signs. Thank you. God bless you for saying that. You too, brother. Take care of yourself. I know. I know the fight. Trust me. I know it very well. Oh yeah. It's not. It's real, and it's not easy. And it and like you said, it it is uh, every day supernatural. We We're fight not we against flesh and blood. That's right. We fight against the principalities. Yep. God bless you. You too, brother. This is Friday, November. November, I think it's the 15th, 16th, 17th, something like that. And this brother is walking down through Kenton, Tennessee, uh, dispersing and telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just find it so attractive that somebody like that would be doing this here in my little hometown. The hometown that basically turned against me and, and uh, belittled me uh, for 30 years simply because they either didn't understand or didn't like my message. I just, I just feel so moved that... Uh, that somebody would do this in in Kenton, Tennessee. Kenton, Tennessee. God bless them for uh, being strong, and God bless them for uh, for basically uh, doing that in which what Christ ordered for us to do, which was uh, carry the cross, um, tell the tell the message. Tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And for that woman to have come out the way that she did, she needs prayer. She needs lots and lots of prayer. The whole Neil family that I was associated with at one time really does need lots of prayer. Um, they are unstable in their ways. Um, they're tongue talkers. Uh, they get caught up into their own drama as far as speaking in 17,000 different languages that I don't uh, necessarily agree with the way that they do it simply because I feel like that they abuse that gift. Now, there are people out there that does uh, partake in the gift and they partake in the gift proper. Um, they're anointed, they're close to God, and God's got a reason for bringing that type of gift uh, up to society. But there's also a lot of them out there, not just the Neils, but there's a lot of them out there that are abusing that gift. And as far as I'm concerned, these people are people that are making a mockery out of God and out of the Holy Spirit by them doing what they're doing. And it's really, really sad that nobody has really called their hand to it uh, pertaining to the uh, the Pentecostal movement because because there's just as many good Pentecostal people or as there are bad ones. There's just as many good uh, Baptist people as there are good ones. There's just as many good Presbyterian people as there are bad ones. I mean in every s sector there's good and bad. And it's really sad that I run upon the wrong group of people here in Kenton, Tennessee that would not embrace me, they would not mentor me, and then they turned against me and started spreading all sorts of propaganda and lies about me simply because they was against 
that in which what the Heavenly Father had called me into. And they basically done the same thing whenever some of the disciples uh, spoke up against uh, an individual that they had bumped into that was preaching and teaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they basically uh, said, well, let's pray fire down upon to this guy. Simply because they didn't understand him or they didn't know him. They didn't recognize who he was. And Jesus said, you know what, not what spirit that you're from. Because he told them that he who is with me cannot be against me. And for this woman here in Kenton, Tennessee, in Little General, to have intervened the way that she did, and there's no doubt, I've had some controversy with some of her family members in the past pertaining to Leroy Neal and Leroy Neal's son, Terry Neal and uh, Kay Neal. There's no doubt that I've had trouble with some of my previous in-laws because they was kin to us in some sort of way. But for her to walk out the way that she did in a shameful way and start making demands and ordering, that was very, very inappropriate and very, very wrong for who for her to have done that the way that she done that. So she definitely needs to be held up in prayer. All right, we're going to let this go, and good luck to all of us. Shalom. See you, bye.